non-product content pages, and we know how to use blocks and widgets to place information in various places on our website, now let's learn how to use blocks and widgets to display links to pages in various areas on the site. Now this can get a little tricky, but we'll take it one step at a time and it won't be very hard. To frame this, let's say we want a list of links similar to this list of links that our theme already provides, but we also want our list of links to include a link to our about page. Now this list of links in the footer, as I said, is baked into the current theme, the Magento blank theme, as well as the stock Magento Luma theme, because Luma inherits from the blank theme. So what we're going to have to do is essentially remove this list, which is a process of its own, and then create a new list, which includes the about link. I should note that there are a lot of ways we could go about doing this, but I'm going to show you what is, in my opinion, the easiest way for a beginner to accomplish this without ending up with something that just looks messy. So first, let's make a note of all of the link text and the URLs that they point to here, because essentially we're going to remove and manually recreate this list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the text of each link and just paste it in a plain text document. Then I'm also going to copy the link address and paste that there as well. And I'm gonna do that for each of these links. So I have all of the links in their URLs here. And of course, if there was something that we wanted to leave out, let's just say for argument's sake, we wanted to leave out advanced search. We could just not put that one there. In fact, let's go ahead and just leave that out. And then at the top, we also want our about link, which we know goes to our domain slash about. So I'm not going to worry about writing that URL up here. So we have this information saved. Now it's time to get rid of this list. This is the hard part because in our case, this list is baked into the theme itself. It's part of the Magento blank theme by default. And it is, as I said, also part of the Luma theme, which inherits from the blank theme. So since this is part of the actual theme, we're going to need to go into the file system and make some adjustments there. Here I am back at the InnerWorks control panel. Again, our site is hosted by Nexus. We're going to open our file manager. Then go to the root directory of your website. And here in our file system, first let me note that if you ever need to do this in a custom theme, you need to go to a different directory than where we are going. For a custom theme, you would need to go to app slash design slash front end slash the name of the vendor of the theme slash the name of the theme itself slash magento underscore theme slash layout. For Magento's stock blank and Luma themes, however, you go to Vendor, Magento, and it looks like we need to go one page over, Module-CMS, View, Front End, Layout. And here, whether you're in this location or in the location that I told you to go to for if you're working with a custom theme, you're going to find the default.xml file. Go ahead and open this to edit it. Now, let me say very quickly that usually it is not advised to edit the core files of Magento. There are some times, though, when editing core is acceptable. For example, in filming this class, there are a few times when I've had to edit core in order to fix bugs that are in the system that were making things outright break. As for this part of the tutorial, for the purposes of this demonstration, we made a small change so that we could cleanly demonstrate how to make our own footer list. Often you'll be working with a theme where this isn't necessarily relevant, so you won't have to edit core anyway. So again, while editing core usually is not advised, it is sometimes necessary, and in this case it's used more or less for demonstration purposes.
To disable the built-in footer links, in our case, and this too can vary from theme to theme, we're going to find reference block with the name footer underscore links. Once you've found the footer links reference block, we're going to add something in here before the closing angle bracket. We're going to add remove equals open quotation mark true close quotation mark. Then click save. Then we're going to go back to the back end of our website. Click on system and go to cache management. And even though it tells us our cache is fine, we need to flush the Magento cache. Now, go back and view the front end of your site as if you were a visitor. Refresh the page. Then scroll down and you'll see that now that is gone because we put that remove true directive in the file. Now we're going to create a whole new block with the information that we want. So back on the back end of our website, we're going to go to content, blocks, and we'll create a new block called footer links. We'll type it all as one word for the identifier. Keep this on all store views. And now we're just going to manually create our own list of footer links. We'll start with an about link. And we can do this by using the WYSIWYG editor or hiding that and doing straight HTML if you want. In case you're not familiar with HTML, I'll just use the WYSIWYG editor. So we'll highlight the word, then click the link icon. And the link URL, you can use the full URL if you want, or just slash and the path. Whichever one of those choices, that's sort of a personal choice. Some people consider it best practice to do one or the other. I always like to do it this way in case the URL of your site ever changes. Then you don't have to go back and change all of the links on your website. Target, open link in the same window, and we won't worry about the title. Insert. Then we'll go down one line and we'll pull up our notes that we had earlier. Privacy and cookie policy. And while I'm putting this information in, I will note that for the privacy and cookie policy, often you're going to want to go and edit that page to have your own privacy and cookie policy that fits your site based on the things your site does and the information it gathers from your customers. The one that comes with Magento is sort of a stock policy. So you want to make sure that you're using a policy that actually fits your site. And then we're just going to do this for all of these links. So we have our list. And if we wanted to, we could go to the HTML and we could turn this into a, an unordered list if we want to, or do whatever kind of HTML things we want to with this. But we can also keep it simple if we want and just have a line break in between each and all of these. However we want to do that, we're going to get these, we're going to have the links we want, and we're going to have them linking to the pages that we want. Once that's done, we'll click Save Block. Now, as you may be able to guess, we're going to go to Content Widgets. We're going to add a new widget. This widget type will also be a CMS static block because this is going to control the block that we just created. And then for design theme, we're using Magento Blank. Click Continue. For the widget title, we'll call this Footer Links. And we're not going to worry about sort order. Add Layout Update. Display on all pages. For the container, we're going to add this to the CMS Footer Links area. And now just to make sure we're covered and not showing this only on technically pages, but also on products, we'll go ahead and add this to all product types just for good measure. And same thing here, all products, CMS footer links, and then we're good. Scroll back up, click widget options, and we need to tell it which block to use. That of course will be our footer links block. Once you've done that, click save.
then of course we're going to need to go back to our page cache management or our cache management rather we're going to need to refresh layouts blocks html output and the page cache submit and if we didn't mess up anywhere along the line if we go back to our website and refresh the page we'll have a nice new little block of footer links if we click about it should take us to the about page fingers crossed and everything works just like it should if we had not removed the original block of links two things one obviously we would have some redundancy the way we did it we copied over the links from that block but that was because we already knew we were going to remove all those we could have created a new block as we did without removing the old one but the problem with doing so is if say we wanted to have different links here we wanted about and maybe a, a refund policy page and maybe store hours or something along those lines something different from what was already there if we did that the problem that happens is this ends up being styled a little differently from the stock footer links block that we get with this theme out of the box that's why in situations like this I felt that it was best and easiest for us to just start all over and do things the way we wanted to. Go and disable that block of links, create our own, and everything looks nice and clean. And now in the future, if we create any other pages similar to our about page that we want to add to our footer links, all we have to do is go to this block on our back end and add a new link and we're all good to go.